Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Hope uh, you've had some time to think about what you're going to do for changes over winter before that cabin fever sets in, things you want to do to your race car, motorcycle, whatever. Get some plans together so that next season you can come out swinging. That's what we all want to do. In the meantime, we're going to continue to pump out a combination of tech and live footage where we can. I'm not going to be going to uh, World Cup Finals this year because of prior engagements. Um, but obviously the team is, so we'll have some updates that I'm going to share. Um, I'm going to continue to work on my car and the other two cars that I need to get on, my Nissan and the Chevelle. Uh, so it should be an interesting winter as things develop on those cars and, of course, the Civic. It, I didn't get a chance to get it on the dyno this weekend. As I was hoping, it'll be sometime this week, maybe... Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, but it is ready now. So anyway, there's that. What we're going to talk about tonight is timing on ethanol and what you may do differently. This is going to be very application specific. It's going to be a 2 liter Evo 8 stock turbo S2s, 92 octane to E85 or E80, something like that. Um, but it kind of shows some trends that you might also notice, regardless of what engine you're running. Uh, LS, small block Chevy, small block Ford, Honda V6, Honda K-Series. You're going to kind of run into some of these similarities just because of physics. So let's go to the dyno sheets first. So as you can see, red is 356, 6100 RPM, 354 foot-pounds. Blue 399.4, torque 383, and it's it's pretty obvious to see that the blue line is beating the pants off the red line. Boost is very, very similar. I'm going to move this up for just a second. 25.1 peak, 25.2 peak. We can kind of see some of that happen down here. And it's important to note, oops, I did it. It's important to note the reason is the mass of ethanol that you increase because you're burning 40 to 60 percent more fuel for a given lambda it's gonna help drive that turbo a little bit harder it's gonna help get things moving it's gonna add some intercooling which when you see where our numbers are here at 4500 rpm uh, for timing it's gonna be kind of enlightening because you can see that the boost is the same um these numbers did report just a little bit low compared to what i was logging in the ecu give you that information in advance but what we're seeing here difference of 348 foot pounds 379 foot pounds pretty much identical boost so let's go to the first log this is the pump gas log um you can see down low boost 26 pounds is what it was reporting, fell off out top, 21. Maybe this was a bigger turbo. I guess maybe this was a green or a 71 HTA. I guess maybe my memory might be faulty. But what we're going to see here, 4,500 right here, 5 degrees about, 25.8, because that's an approximation in the stock ECU. It can change a little bit. 25.8 pounds of boost is what I recorded here. Uh, knock voltage was low, so, you know, it made that 348 pounds with some pretty good timing. Or pound feet, rather, uh, with some pretty good timing. Out the top, 7,700, we're 11 degrees, 22 pounds. So, when we move from that 4,500 RPM here, remember, 348 foot-pounds to 379, now watch what the timing did. 4,500 RPM, thereabouts. Actually less timing and boost. Some of that is a gain because of intercooling, uh, because of how the ethanol is acting going into the airstream. It's increasing air density at the valve, so we get a little bit torque. So I actually dropped timing down low, and you can see above that uh, where it's... It's making good power here too. I dropped two or three degrees out down low. 
Uh, so you might ask, why did I do that? Well, I happen to know that this happens. And on a stock bottom end, we want to try to control the torque. So if we look at like 4,000 RPM, 1 to 2 degrees right in here, uh, 20, 26 pounds, basically right when it was hitting full whip. We go back to the pump gas, same area, 3 or 4. So you can see hotter air. Knock voltage was still about the same, so I was probably a little bit on the low side. But then the results, just because we were coming up more torque, actually took timing out. Now, let's look at peak power. Let's look right around 6,000 RPM. I grab 6050 right there. So we're going to go back to the pump gas real quick. Right in that area, 7 degrees. Knock looks good, 23 and a half pounds. Uh, narrow band seems to match the wide band it was rich it was in the 11s so everything being equal why did it go from 355 to 399 well the answer is pretty easy because we added oops if I click on the right one we added some timing I did click on the right one. Okay, so let's come down here to 6,000. 6,000. A little less boost because we have more timing. Maybe a little bit more noise. No indicated knock. A little bit more knock voltage, though. Making more cylinder pressure. So we came up 4 or 5 degrees. And we picked up 45 wheel. Not bad, really. So as you can see, the trend is... Less timing down low, by and large, for a given boost level. Uh, ethanol does not seem to appreciate a bunch of timing at peak torque, uh, if it's low. Now, if you have a big turbo, you're not even spooling until 55 or 6,000. It kind of is what it is. At that RPM, you just need timing anyway, so you might be that 11 degrees at peak torque. Um, but this is a stock motor, smaller turbo application. So what you're going to see is you're going to see less down low, and in this case, what I've always noticed, right around 5,500 RPM, all of a sudden, you can start really ramping that timing in. Um, it'll start taking it where pump gas, these numbers are going to be 5 or 6 degrees. We're already to 9. We talked about this. This was 7 degrees. Now we're up to 11 or 12. And then out the top, it's going to run 18 degrees where this uh, red line, pump gas, is, is running 11 or 12. A particular car, I believe, was 12. We'll, we'll go back and look. Uh, 376 horsepower versus 321. So 55 more horsepower. And it appears... Yeah, yeah, it was basically 11 degrees. It only hit 12 there for just a little bit. But at 7,100... I had to go look and see what we were dealing with. 7,100, we're 10 degrees, heading towards 11. And then when we go to ethanol, 17 degrees. So that 55 horsepower in 6 degrees. What I consider normal, 10 horsepower per degree. Uh, if it's any less than that, I start getting a little nervous. Don't like to do it. So anyway, guys. I realize that this is very specific to Evos and one version of the Evo, but if you have been tuning your car and trying to figure out where you need to be on your ethanol timing, for the most part, as you're approaching the, the top quarter of your RPM range, so in this case an 8,000 RPM motor, 6,000 to 8,000, start feeding timing in. Below that, peak torque, you can get a you can get by with a little less if you need to, if it's a stock engine and you're trying to keep the connecting rods in it. Remember, we don't run static timing UV8, guys. You will still have a timing curve. You're going to be lower at lower RPM. You're going to be higher at higher RPM. Uh, maybe not as much as some of these small bore motors, but you're, you are going to notice a difference also. Anyway, hope that has helped give you some information, something to think about as you experiment. Keep in mind, small changes. Don't go, don't go 
chasing waterfalls, as they say. You don't want to make some big jumps in timing and end up blowing rods out. That gets expensive, both monetarily and time-wise. Uh, make some small changes, and less is always safest. So if you're going to make any changes, pull some timing. Don't necessarily go throwing two degrees in just to see what it does. Pull two degrees. Maybe you were already a little bit high. If you're on a dyno, hopefully, you're going to see the results real fast. You can always put it back in, but it's hard to take it out after it's done damage. If this is content that you like and you haven't subscribed, I invite you to do so. If you know somebody that might like this format and this type of tech, it does tend to be a little bit nerdy. I understand that, but consider sharing it with them. And if you have subscribed and you need notified every time I put up a new video, which we're going to be get, getting back in the one to two videos a week, hopefully, hit the bell icon. That will help notify you as I add that content. Okay, guys, take care.